Hi, welcome to the AWS User Group Duala Meetup. The theme for today is AWS certifications, how to get started, prepare, and how to get AWS certified. I'm Roshan Zimunfo, I'm a freelance software developer and cloud enthusiast, and I'll be your host for this Meetup session. Um, so today we've got our guest speaker, Mr. Fon Quenti. He's an experienced IT professional and he'll be talking about AWS certifications, how to start and what paths to follow, how to prepare and how to prepare and take the exams. Uh, the, event, the event is being recorded and I'll share, we'll share later on on YouTube. So if you're part of the AWS user group to our community on meetup.com, then you receive a link via email to check it out. If you are not yet registered as a member, I'll paste the link in the chats so that you do so immediately. That way you don't miss any future meetups and any future events that will be hosted. At the end of the talk, I will share a link to a questionnaire where we'll please need your feedback on this meetup in order to make the next one better. And then after that, we'll be doing a raffle draw where we'll be giving out uh, free AWS credits based on those who completed the questionnaire. So without much ado, I'll give the stage to Mr. Fon Quentin. Okay, um, thank, thank you, Rochelle. Hello, everyone. Welcome again um, for those who are just joining in. Um, so let me um, let me begin first of all by sharing sharing my screen. Okay. All right. So um, today we are going to uh, talk about AWS certifications. You know how to get started, prepared, and um, get AWS certified. So before diving straight into the certifications, let me just share some uh, background information about you know, skills in the job market and jobs in general. So um, according to global knowledge, you know, cloud computing is the second most um, in-demand IT skill as of 2021. Actually, last year, it was the number one uh, most in-demand IT skill. And um, actually, um, in 2021, um, blockchain and cybersecurity are the two competing technologies, but you know, fundamentally, those two technologies are still they still leverage cloud computing a lot. So you know, many companies around the world of all sizes and from all sectors are looking for cloud talent. You know, I came across an article from the um, uh, from the Australian government, right, saying that they were looking at a cloud first strategy for you know government digital transformation initiatives. So it's not only commercial companies, even governments too are looking into cloud computing. So um, as more and more companies move away from the traditional server infrastructure on premises to cloud solutions, you know, the demand for IT professionals in this area has also risen very steeply. So, you know, cloud computing engineers who can design, plan, manage, and maintain, you know, cloud computing workloads are becoming short in supply. So, but what about the future, right? If you get into cloud computing now, will your skills and experience remain relevant? Um, well, the picture that you see here is from the Future of Jobs Report 2020. Um, this is a report uh, prepared by the World Economics Forum. And the data is gotten from surveying many companies and countries around the world. So um, it presents, you know, a selection of technologies organized according to, you know, a company's likelihood to adopt them by 2025. And you can see on top there, you have cloud computing, you know, as well as big data, e-commerce, you know, they still remain very high priorities. Um, and this trend has been something that has been gradually growing steadily over the, the past years, you know. Um, so no matter where you are in your career, you, if you have an opportunity to get into cloud computing right now, you better get into cloud computing because you'll still be, you know, relevant all the way to 2025. So, um, the agenda for today is, you know, we are going to look at um, how AWS certifications can help you propel or can propel you in your career. 
uh, we'll look at the available AWS certifications, you know, um, which ones, you know, might be suitable for you, depending on your background. Um, we're going to look at how you could probably, you can start and a, and a path you could follow to, you know, acquiring multiple certifications if you think that is, you know, something that is going to help you in your career. Um, we're going to look at some unique benefits to um, AWS um, certifications, right? You know, apart from the, 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 the general uh, benefits of, you know, certifications in the IT industry, there are some things that, you know, you, you benefit from when you are AWS certified. Um, we are also going to look at the, the, exam, the exam details, right? You know, some new things that were brought into the exam um, as of 2020 and some resources that are free that you can take advantage of. And then I'll share some tips on how to prepare and take the exams. And then we'll look briefly at the Get AWS Certified Global Challenge. So um, before um, we get into AWS certifications, let me just introduce my, myself in the context of um, AWS certifications. So um, my, my full names are Quenty from Quenty. Um, I have about 11 years of experience in IT. Uh, my first job was uh, online tech support for Apple products and uh, Apple software. Um, I did that for one year. And then um, I worked as an IP um, network engineer, uh, designing and building and supporting uh, Vodacom's domestic NPLS backbone network. Um, I currently work at Vodacom Business Cameroon. And then um, I eventually transitioned to a more customer facing, but still technical role as a solutions architect. So um, for the greater part of my career, I acquired mostly um, Microsoft and Cisco networking certifications because you know that was directly relevant to the, uh, the roles or the jobs or the tasks that I was performing at that time. I started you know, taking AWS certifications in 2018. And um, I currently have five um, AWS certifications. And, um, you know, there is this thing that you see on social media where people always, you know, they say I'm 2x AWS certified, I'm 3x AWS certified. So um, you can see I am 5x AWS certified because I currently hold um, five AWS certifications. So um, I have one foundational certification, which is a certified cloud practitioner and two associate certifications, which are the um, AWS developer and AWS solutions architect associate certifications. Um, I also have two specialty certifications, which are the um, certified security and certified advanced networking um, certifications. So um, in terms of how long it took me to get these certifications, well, um, the first certification took me about nine months, right? Um, the first one was the AWS certified solutions associate. Um, certification. And then um, the next one was the um, the advanced networking certification, which took me about six months to prepare for it. And then I took the certified developer, as you said, about four months, after about four months of preparation, right? And then um, last year, AWS launched the um, certified cloud practitioner certification. And I had a friend who was um, um, getting into cloud computing, the friend was based in the US. So he wanted me to like, you know, help him prepare for the certification. So uh, when I checked, I discovered that it was officially was listed as costing um, 100 US dollars for the, for the certification itself. But, you know, when I, when I went to the AWS training website and I looked at the cost, you know, um, and I selected, you know, Af Africa like my location, I discovered that the cost was actually $50. So I decided to take the exam. I just, it took me about two weeks to prefer, prepare for it. And um, when I took it, you know, I, I passed with a, a 1,000 over 1,000 score, right? So um, I know after going forward, I had to come back and take, you know, the cloud practitioner certification, but um, I just had to do it because, you know, there was an opportunity to actually, you know, help someone to, to get certified. So, um, My last certification, I actually took it this year, the security certification, that's the AWS Certified Security Specialty. So um, the reason why I took that particular certification is, um, apart from cloud computing as the number one, you know, most in demand IT skill, you know, cybersecurity is also uh, very, very important, right? And as more companies are moving their, their, their infrastructure, their workloads to, to AWS cloud, you know, security is a very huge concern. So it took me about, you know, two weeks, two weeks, I'm sorry, two months and a few weeks to prepare for the security certification. 
So um, you can you can also follow me on Twitter and on the, on LinkedIn. Um, you can see my my Twitter and LinkedIn handles uh, below on the slide. So um, I appreciate it if you can reach out to me if you have any ideas about you know the user group. If you're interested in AWS certifications, you have any questions, feel free to um, send me a private message. You know if I can help you out, I'll definitely be. Uh, I would definitely be happy to help you out. If not, I will point you to the right direction. So, so what are AWS uh, certifications, right? Um, AWS certifications are just you know credentials that are issued to an individual, right? It's not issued to um, a company. It's not issued to a group of people, right? Because you as an individual, you prepare and take the exam. So AWS issues this certification to, 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 to confirm that you have gone through a particular challenge in the form of an exam and um, you succeeded, right? So um, AWS certifications are recognized across the whole industry, right? And you, you, most of you already know that AWS is the number one um, cloud provider in the whole world, right? They actually started this 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 particular um, cloud computing business model. So um, another interesting thing about AWS certifications is that they are actually prepared by experts, right? By AWS experts, and these are people, you know, that actually work that at the at the, at the forefront of uh, cloud computing. So when you have an AWS certification, you can be assured that, you know. You are you 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 took a test that is relevant to what is currently in the job market, right? And another interesting thing about AWS certifications is that they are open to everyone, and um, you do not really need to follow any particular curriculum or any particular uh, 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 format, right, to prepare for the exam, right? You can take it coming from any background, even non-IT people, right? With a cloud, with a certified cloud practitioner exam, you can also be AWS certified. So um, AWS certifications can, you know, propel your career, right? And if you're working, for example, in a company and the company decides that, oh, tomorrow we want to get into cloud computing. So if you're already certified, for example, right, the company will not need to look further. They'll just identify that, oh, we already have people that are certified in this particular technology, right? And, you know, you can be called up to be part of, you know, a team that is leading the, you know, maybe the cloud center of excellence. And um, for organizations that are AWS partners, for example, you know, the more certified people they have in their team of engineers, you know, the more AWS is going to grant them an advanced uh, partnership, right? And those partnerships, the companies really benefit from the partnerships because they give them, you know, um, a lot of support in terms of marketing and in terms of maybe even technical support and, you know, um, a credit to perform, to carry out proof of concepts, you know, on the AWS platform. So for somebody like me, my, my particular experience has been that, you know, now because I'm AWS certified in my company, you know, whenever there's anything cloud related, you know, I'm the person that, you know, they, they look towards to by default, right? They say, oh, we have this customer, they're working on a, a disaster recovery strategy. They want to see how they can back up, you know, or they can move all of their archiver, all of their uh, magnetic tapes that are on premises. They want to take it to the cloud, you know, automatically they're going to turn towards me because I'm, the, I'm somebody who is already certified. So that's an interesting advantage that I, I personally benefit from. So apart from that, right, you, you might already be, you know, you might already be a, a developer, right? And you already know how to maybe develop using the AWS platform. But when you go through a certification examination, right, you discover other things that, you know, you don't use every day, right? Maybe there are new tools, new services that come up that will appear on the exam. But until you know you challenge yourself by taking an exam, you might not know about all of the tools that are available to you to actually make your job you know smoother. Right. So some things that you need to know about you know certifications is that there are certifications for all levels of experience, right? Um, even if you're if you even if you you have ten years of experience or you're just starting your IT career, right? There are certifications for all levels of experience. Um, there is no prerequisite to take an exam. Right? The moment you feel ready to take an exam, you can take it, right? Um, there is no uh, prerequisite that says that, oh, you must attend you know, a semester and you know, attend maybe 70% of the classes before you are eligible to take the exam. You know, the exams are also timed and they're propped up, right? So that people should not cheat. 
and um, you can take you no know, historically you could only take the exam in an authorized testing center uh, but due to the COVID pandemic now testing at home has become a reality so um, AWS does offer you know recommended training resources but it is not required right but um, I think my advice is that anybody that has an opportunity to go about the AWS training resources should do so no, and the, the beautiful thing about AWS certifications is that you can learn, learn at your own pace, right? Um, for example, it took me nine months to prepare for one, you know, two months to prepare for another. So it just depends on you and how you allocate your, your time. So now let us look at, you know, this, these are all the AWS certifications that are available as of May 2021. Now, there are currently 11 AWS certifications, and uh, this hasn't always been a stable number. I think last year, there were up to 13 uh, certif certifications, right? But they retired some certifications and they brought in some newer ones. For example, the Certified Cloud Practitioner was introduced only last year. And the, um, there, there was a data, a big data, yes, there was a big data certification that was um, retired and also the Alexa Skills Builder certification was deprecated last year. So um, there are four categories of certifications, right, which are the foundational, the associate, the professional, and the specialty. And um, generally, AWS recommends that you have a minimum amount of time of experience, you know, before taking the exams, but this is not an enforceable prerequisite, right, they're just recommendations. So um, you, may be, you may be wondering, how do I determine which certification is right for me? I think the best way to approach that question is to consider your role, right? And then evaluate your existing level of experience yeah. and knowledge across the various areas of technical and you know, cloud expertise or IT in general. So um, within each certification category, right? There are role-based certifications and they are categorized according to job titles and duties. Um, these certifications are the ones that you see in the gray boxes on the, on the right, right? Um, and the role-based certifications validate the knowledge, experience, and skills that someone needs to, be, to have in order to be successful in um, these particular roles in an organization that is building on AWS, right? And you know, they are generally referred to as core cloud roles. So um, the first um, category is the foundational category, right? And there is just one certification in the foundational uh, in the foundational category. So it is for non-technical, you know, people, not necessarily IT people, right? And the certification is intended for individuals who can, you know, just effectively demonstrate an overall understanding of AWS cloud. You know, it is not really dependent on any specific technical role. It's just, you know, general knowledge about AWS cloud. And um, you see a journey of a thousand miles begins with one step. So I think the cloud practitioner is just like your first step towards your journey to becoming, you know, an AWS certified um, uh, engineer. So the next category of certifications is the... Um, the associate level of, level of certifications, right? So the associate certifications are very broad, broad in scope because you need to know a little bit about so many different services on the AWS platform, uh, but it does not go very deep into any specific technology or service. So at this level, the certifications are mostly in the core functions of architecting um, operations and development on AWS Cloud. So if you want to work in any particular technical cloud related role, then you know these are the certifications that you definitely need to start with. But you know if you want to be a well-rounded cloud architect or a cloud engineer, then I advise that you go for all of the three certifications in the associate category. And um, you will also notice that there is a lot of overlap in terms of the knowledge required to pass the associate level certification. So it's advisable to take you know all the three certifications back to back if you want to become a well-rounded cloud engineer. Because, you know, when you study for the um, certified um, um, associate, um, or certified um, solutions architect associate, right? You discover the, the information that you, or the knowledge that you gather from there, you can still apply it in the developer um, associate as well as the sysops um, associate exams. So the certified solutions architect 
um, associate exam is, you know, it is the, I think it is the most relevant out of the three associate certifications. And it is the broadest in terms of, in terms of scope, right? Because as an architect, you need to know about, you know, as many things as possible to know the best one to use in a particular use case. So um, this is generally the recommended entry level certification for people who want to get, you know, you, know, you really want to get hands on, on the AWS platform. So it is the next logical step after you've acquired the, um, the, the, the certified cloud practitioner certification. So um, you need to have, you know, a lot of practical experience using AWS compute, networking, storage, you know, databases and some of the management services. So the next certification is the um, SysOps Administrator Associate Certification, right? So um, SysOps is generally about systems operations on AWS platform, and it's regarded as one of the hardest AWS certifications. So if your goal is to take all of the three associate level certifications, um, I, I would advise that you go for this one at the end, um, so that by the time you get to it, you know, you must have already gotten very familiar with a lot of the the services from the um the from the certified um, architect and the developer associate you know, examinations so um something you need to note about the sysops um, associate uh, certification is that um, there is a new version for this certification and it starts on the 27th of july 2021 so the last day to take the current examination is the 26th of july and what is special about the new version of the SysOps certification is that, you know, it includes labs, right? So you need to go, you don't only have multiple choice questions, right? You need to go to the console and actually click and set up services. And you also need to access the AWS command line interface to also, you know, configure uh, one or two tasks. So this is actually the first time that AWS is introducing labs. So you need to pay attention to this as well. And the final um, uh, associate level certification is the Certified Developer Associate um, Certification. So um, this is not really, this, this one is not going to teach you how to be a developer, right? It just teaches you how you can, you know, you can build applications on the AWS platform, you know, and also how you can programmatically access the services, right? You need to be familiar with services such as um, DynamoDB, um, SQS, SNS, Lambda, et cetera, et cetera. And you also need to be very versed with the AWS command line interface, the AWS um, software development kit, and your API tools. So um, the next category is the professional category, right? Um, at the professional level, you know, the scope is very broad as compared to the associate level. It's even broader and it goes quite deeper into so many services. So this, this level of certifications, this is the highest level of certifications and it's for people who really know what you're doing, right? You know, just like anything that, it, anything that is difficult, right? You know, it becomes easy when you have a lot of experience. So, you know, generally it's advisable to attempt the professional certifications when you have acquired, you know, a lot of um, um, experience on the AWS platform. So the first, certification in the professional level is the certified solutions architect professional so this is for solutions architects with advanced technical skills right and um, it it's generally advised that you should you know attempt it after about two or three years of experience uh, so you're expected to have you know very deep understanding of every single aws service in the entire aws ecosystem and you must be capable of evaluating you know um, application requirements, you know, we must be capable of making architectural recommendations for implementation, um, deployments and provisioning of applications on AWS. So um, it really tests your ability to map business objectives to applications or architectural requirements. And you must be capable of providing, you know, best practice guidance on architectural designs across multiple applications and projects. So the next um, professional certification is the DevOps engineers, uh, the certified DevOps engineer professional certification. So um, with this one, this one is all about CI CD pipelines, right? You must be capable of implementing and managing, you know, continuous delivery systems and methodologies on AWS. So um, you also need to know how to implement and automate security controls, right? And uh, compliance validations, right? Because 
because of a lot of security issues, you know, security is shifting left in the CICD pipeline, right? You know, security used to be, you know, an afterthought, right? After the, the application has already been built and delivered, that's when you think about security. So, but nowadays, you know, security is shifting left. And so, you know, when you are deploying your CI CD pipelines, you also need to integrate security and compliance as well. So the next category of certifications are the specialty um, certifications, right? So this category is very, very narrow in scope, right? They focus only on a few AWS services, but they require you to, to have very deep knowledge in them, right? So in other words, you need to know everything about some services and absolutely nothing about others. So um, the first one is the certified, you know, advanced networking um, specialty certifications. So this is for individuals who perform complex networking tasks. For example, you know, hybrid cloud scenarios that require you to connect maybe um, a data center on premises to the to the AWS cloud, for example, right? So in order to make a connection, you need um, a stable network, right? So you know, this particular certification focuses a lot on those type of scenarios. So it is, it is referred to as one of the most difficult AWS certifications, right? So even if you have a networking background, right, it won't be easy for you. Uh, for net, for non-networking engineers, you will be challenged by the networking concepts such as, you know, uh, BGP, QEQ, NPLS, and IPsec VPNs. And for people who even have, you know, a networking background and are familiar with these networking technologies, right? You'll be dealing with the um, with the platform that you know the networking layer of AWS is actually software defined, so you wouldn't be looking at physical devices with physical ports and cables, right? Everything is software defined, so it's going to be a little bit challenge even if you are a networking engineer. So the next. Um, specialty is the advanced, um, is the AWS certified advanced um, or set AWS certified security specialty. Um, this certification is for individuals who perform in a security related role, right? So um, in my in my personal experience, um, I think this is a fit certification that I took and I found it um, quite, I wouldn't say easy, but it was, by the time I took it, I was already familiar with most of the concepts, right? Because, you know, there's security in almost everything, right? All of the other um, foundational and associate level certifications, right? They also touch on security of the various services. So by the time I took this exam, I was already familiar with most of the security um, uh, uh, configurations, right? Uh, the only thing is that this particular certification goes deep into um, services just such as um, AWS KMS or key management service. Um, it goes deep into CloudTrail and AWS Config and also the identity and access management services. Um, the next uh, specialty certification is the um, database specialty, right? And this is for individuals who have expertise in, you know, so many database um, software and um, services, right? So um, I know it is named the um, certified database specialty, but it's not, it doesn't teach you how to build database schemas, right? It's mostly for, I would say systems admins, right? People that actually bring up the infrastructure required to run databases, right? So it doesn't teach you, you know, all of this complex database stuff, no. The next uh, specialty certification is the data analytics, right? I think this is one of the newer certifications that were introduced in 2020. So this one is for individuals who use AWS services to build, to design and to secure, you know, analytics solutions that provide insights from data, right? So there's a huge focus on um, AWS S3, which is the object storage service, um, Redshift for data warehousing, Kinesis for pipelines, and Elastic Map Reduce, right? So um, it's just a lot of the general, you know, data analytics, uh, pipelines, and also visualization, right? That's why that's what this certification really focuses on. And um, the last one is the um, the machine learning certification, right? So this one is for individuals who perform, you know, in a development or data science role and wish to validate your ability to design, implement and deploy and maintain machine learning solutions for business problems, right? 
So it validates your ability to select and justify appropriate machine learning approaches for a given business problem, and also to identify the appropriate AWS services to implement machine learning solutions. Right. So, you know, if there's anybody that is um, into big data or machine learning, I think you will definitely find this particular certification very beneficial because not all companies, you know, have the infrastructure to deploy their machine learning models. So, so long as you have, you know, you're working for a company that has big data on the cloud, you definitely you know, need somebody with this particular skill set. All right. So now um after seeing all of the 11 aws certifications right you might be asking yourself where do i start and um, maybe what path should i take if i want to become a cloud architect for example so first you must have a goal in mind right which should guide your decisions right um you need to know what you want to achieve you need to know what you want to be you, you want to be tomorrow right and how much time you have to move from where you are today to get to where you want to be tomorrow so in order to increase your, your career prospects, for example, you know, you might, you might, you know, you might judge that, oh, if I get to cloud computing, you know, it can increase my, the possibilities of me pivoting to a completely new career. And that's very, very possible because cloud computing is still picking up in a lot of places around the world. So um, let's look at, you know, two general, you know, goals that I believe most people will find themselves in, right? The first one is, you know, I want to be a cloud architect. So if you want to be a cloud architect, right, I would, advance that you, I would advise that you start, first of all, with the cloud practitioner. So, you know, when learning a new language, for example, French, right, you know, most people learn bonjour, right? I know for some people it is je t'aime, right? Je t'aime is probably the first French um, statement that you hear, but, you know, I think cloud practitioner is just like the bonjour of AWS, right? Or the bonjour of, you know, cloud computing, right? It is going to teach you your first words in a sense, so that, you know, when somebody mentions any particular AWS service, you know, you will not be dumbfounded, right? You have an idea of what it is. So, um, but I just want to mention that this is an optional certification, especially, right, if you already have basic knowledge, right, you can always decide to skip the cloud practitioner certification and just go straight for the Solutions Architect Associate certification. So, um, even if you have the Certified Cloud Practitioner certification and you want to go one step high, higher, right, you know, you can, you can definitely go in for the uh, Solutions Architect Associate Certification, right? So this one is really going to, you know, teach you how to actually get into the platform and build stuff, right? And also improve, improve on what you, what is referred to as your cloud fluency, right? So due to the breadth in terms of the scope, you know, it definitely raises the bar from the Certified Cloud Practitioner Associate Certification. So I think the next certification that you need to um, aim for is the Developer Associate Certification. You know, this is actually going to help you to build on all the possibilities in the, in the realm of you know, applications on AWS platform, right? Uh, if you have some programming background, you, know, you can definitely benefit from the AWS command line interface, the, 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 the AWS SAM, you know, AWS CDK, and all of these programming tools that can facilitate the building of applications, right? And once you, you have built and you have run your applications on the AWS cloud, right? You also need to think about, you know, how you can, you know, maintain those applications and monitor the costs, right? And that's where the SysOp certification comes in next because it's going to teach you just how you can deploy, operate, and monitor the applications in a fault tolerant, you know, architecture that are already running on the AWS cloud. So um, the second, you know, general um, uh, area that most people find themselves in, right, is, you know, they already have a particular background in, let me say, networking, for example, which is my case, right? And, you know, I, I currently work as a networking engineer, but, you know, I wanted to, you know, see how I can understand networking in the cloud. So, um, do not necessarily assume that because you're an expert, you know, in a particular domain, you know, it's going to be easy for you to just get on the AWS cloud and, you know, just easily find, find it easy, right? You know, I'll, I'll still advise that, you know, it, it definitely pays to start with the cloud practitioner um, certification, right? And then, you know, go for the, at least the solutions architect certifications, 
certification, right? Because it is going to give you, you know, a lot of information about, you know, the various AWS services, you know, and how the AWS platform is designed and built, right? Before now, you can decide to go deep into any of the, 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 the specialty certifications, right? Um, in case you are a security um, specialist, for example, you know, it's technically still the same path. You know, start with the cloud practitioner, do the solutions architect, right? Um, maybe do another, as you said, level certification before you attempt the specialty, right? Before you attend the specialty certification that you know you're an expert already in. So um, when you are AWS certified, for example, apart from the fact that you know you, you gain recognition, right? There are some things that are unique to AWS certifications, right? So when you are AWS certified, you know, AWS gives you these digital badges, right? Which you can see on the on the left, right? So the digital badges are available on Credly Acclaim, a Credly Acclaim's platform. So um, in your AWS certification account, when you pass an exam, they're going to show you the link, right? So when you click on the link now, you're going to go to um, Credly Acclaim's website. And the advantage of um, going to the website is that from there now you can share your digital badges to LinkedIn, you can share it to Twitter, you can share it to Facebook directly from that platform, right? And also if somebody wanted to know all of the available certifications you have, right, you could just send them a single link, right? And they can go there and see all of your available certifications, right? Um, another advantage um, of being AWS certified is that, you know, you are going to be part of the AWS certified global community on LinkedIn, right? So um, an advantage of joining a community is that, you know, you meet people that, you know, are of the same level with you, uh, maybe below you, you can help them, or you also meet people that are above you, right? They can inspire you to be a better person, right? And after you pass any AWS certification exam, right, you also have a 50% discount towards either recertifying when your certification expires after three years, or if you want to move on to a higher certification, right, you can use the 50% discount voucher to make the next exam 50% cheaper. So um, you also have free practice questions for your next AWS certifications exams, right? And you have an exclusive, um, um, an exclusive link to the AWS certification store where you can buy, you know, certification gear such as T-shirts, agendas, uh, mugs, and, um, and notebooks, etc. And also, um, when there are events, you know, if you're AWS certified, you can, you know, participate in events that have been organized by, by AWS. Okay. So um, let us look at some attributes that are common to all AWS certifications, right? So um, the first one is um, delivery, right? So um, there are two authorized testing providers for AWS certifications, right? And the testing providers are Pearson View and PSI. So um, historically, they used to deliver the um, certifications exams in testing centers, right? And a testing center is just a facility that is operated independently from AWS, right? And they offer in-person proctoring as well as, you know, a, a, a computer with the right software required for you to take the examination, right? But now, you know, um, with COVID-19 um, restrictions and confinement everywhere, everywhere, you know, you can also go in for online proctoring, right? And, you know, online proctoring just allows you to take the test from any environment such as your home or your office, right? So you can use your own laptop um, for the exam and um, you just need to make sure that you understand English and you can communicate with the, with the proctor. And um, the proctor is definitely going to need access to your webcam. So you also need to have a, a computer that has um, a webcam so that, you know, the proctor can monitor you to make sure that you are not doing anything fishy. So um, another um, attribute about AWS exams is that, you know, there are two types of questions, right? Um, there are multiple choice and multiple answer questions, right? So for the multiple choice questions, you, you usually have one correct response for three incorrect responses, right? So, you know, they can give, you know, a question, there are four possible answers, only one is correct. But usually when they, they, you are required to answer 
code, you, when you're required to tick two correct answers, there are usually more questions, sorry, more answers uh, provided to you. So the incorrect answers are generally referred to as distractors, right? They are just, you know, designed to trick you, you know, to know whether you really understand what they are asking you, right? So they're just possible, you know, answers, but they are not accurate. So you need to pay attention um, to that. And um, if you do not answer any question, you do not get any score. And um, even if you answer a particular question incorrectly, you do not get any penalty for answering wrongly. So it's advisable to attempt all questions, even if you do not know the answer. So um, regarding the cost for the exams, it's actually going to depend on the particular exam that you are, think you are, you are, you are taking. The foundational exams cost 100 US dollars. Um, but, you know, as I mentioned earlier, um, the certified cloud practitioner exam, when I was taking it, it was $50 instead of $100, right? So generally the associate exams cost um, uh, $150, and then the professional and the specialty exams cost um, $300. So um, if at all you want to take a practice exam, you know, practice exams are not free as well. Um, they cost uh, $20 for the foundational and associate exam and $40 for the professional and the specialty certifications. Now, um, another thing that you need to take note of is the duration of the examinations, right? So the duration also depends on the particular exam that you're taking. So um, the, the, the foundational exam, which is the, the, CC, the certified um, cloud practitioner exam, is only 90 minutes, right? And the solutions architects associate and all the other associate level exams are, I, I think they go for 130 minutes, right? And the professional exams are 180 minutes long. And for the special, specialty exams, it varies between 170 and 180 minutes. Now, um, the exams are scored from zero to 1000, right? And the passing score also depends on the certification category. So you need to make sure that you look at the exam guide to know the passing score for the exam that you're going to take. Um, the exam results are usually available um, within five business days, right? So you get an email notification uh, when your exam results are available. So immediately you take the exam, you know whether you passed or you failed, right? But to get a, a detailed breakdown of, you know, how we scored in the various domains, right? You need to wait for about five business days for the report to be sent to your email. So, um, but what happens if you fail, right? I know no one goes into an exam opening, hoping to fail, but you know, if you know, the worst case scenario happens and for some reason you are not prepared enough and you fail, um, the bad news is you have to wait for 14 days before you can retake the exam. Um, but the good news is, you know, there is no limit on how often you can you can uh, retake any particular AWS exam. So um, you can you can take it until you succeed. You know, for some for some certification exams, if you take and fail three times, you are automatically, you know, you know, told to hold on maybe like for two or three years or something like that. You know, for AWS, it's just fourteen days, and if you failed, you can retake after fourteen days. So all AWS certifications are valid for for three years, right? And after three years, you would need to recertify if you want to maintain your certification status. So um, the good news is, you know, if you have an associate level certification, right, and the certification is about to get expired, let me say you have like the, the, the certified cloud practitioner certification, then you have the solutions architect, the developer, and the CSOP, CSOPs administrator um, associate uh, level certifications. After three years, you know, it, it, you might think that you need to recertify to take all the four certifications, right? But what you could simply do is that you could take a professional level certification, right? And it's going to automatically recertify the other associate and foundational level certification. So um, I think that's something to keep in mind. And also, um, you would already have, you know, that 50% voucher in your account from your last certification. So, you know, we just need to apply the voucher, take a higher level professional certification and automatically we have recertified all of the associate level certifications as well. So now uh, once you've decided that, you know, you have a specific goal in mind, you know what you want to become tomorrow. Let's say, you know, you want to become a cloud architect or maybe a DevOps engineer, right? 
you have chosen a particular path and you know which certification that you want to take to begin your certification journey, right? So, of course, you definitely need to have a plan. You need to prepare and make sure that you take and pass the certification exam. So, um, you can never be too prepared for any certification exam, right? And you need as much help as possible, especially when you're just starting up, right? Just, it really pays to try to, you know, have a look at all the different sources and gradually you'll figure out what actually works best for you. So um, the first thing before taking any certification or any AWS certification exam is that you must first of all create the AWS certifications um, account, right? So you need to go to aws.training slash certification and uh, create an account there. And it is through this account that you would, you know, schedule and pay for your AWS certifications exams, right? And on this account, you also, um, it's on this same account that you also take the practice test. So the next thing that you need to do is you must, you know, have a look at the exam guide, right? Because the exam guide contains, you know, the content outline and the target audience for the certification exam. It also shows you like the different areas where you might need to focus, right? You know, 50% might come from a particular domain, so you need to pay attention to that as well. So um, AWS recommends that you take training courses from the AWS training website. You know, you can get training from other sources, but you know, um, the important thing is that the, 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 the information is just enough for you to take and pass the exam. And um, try to get, you know, much hands-on, um, much, you know, hands-on practice as possible. Um, you can open a free tier account and um, there are many, I think AWS has got what they call um, uh, uh, reference architectures, right? Yeah. So you can go over some of the reference architectures and, you know, use your free tier account to learn how to build and monitor stuff on AWS. So um, it's, it also, it's also important to look at the, the, the sample questions, right? Because the sample questions will help you to become familiar with the format of the questions used on the actual certification exam. So um, also have a look at white papers, right? And I can't overstress this because there are some white papers that, you know, when you're starting your certification journey, um, those white papers would always be relevant, right? There are certain white papers that are relevant across multiple uh, certification exams, right? So um, in order to know which, which white paper is relevant, you know, it's always good to visit the, 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 um, the AWS certification examination um, Page. Exactly. So, for example, for the solutions architect, there are a list of white papers that are recommended that you know you need to read in order to pass that, set that particular certification. So, um, it's also recommended that you you take an exam readiness course, right? So, these exam readiness courses are either delivered in the form of webinars, as live webinars, um, where you can interact with the AWS instructors, and they are also available as courses on the AWS training um, website. So um, when you take an AWS exam, you know, you, you have one free practice, you have a voucher for a free practice test. So I'll definitely advise that you should take the practice exams because, you know, they, they're going to help you test your knowledge in a timed environment, which is similar to the experience that you get during the actual certification exam, right? So, you know, it just prepares you for the actual stuff, you know, in, a, in an environment that, you know, it's within your control. So it also helps you to know how to navigate the, um, the certification or the exam um, user interface, right? And you know, you, it also helps you to, to, to know how to flag questions so that you can come later on. And you know, if, for example, if a question you don't, you don't, you don't understand the question or you don't want to waste, waste too much time on that particular question, right? You can just flag it and then come back later on, you know, to see you know, after you've gone through all the other questions, you can come back later on and, you know, pay more attention on it. So, you know, it also gives you a report at the end, right? So that you can know exactly which domains you, you need to improve on before you take the actual exam. So um, at the end, you, of course, you definitely need to schedule your exam, right? And, you know, it's advisable to schedule your exam in advance, right? So that, you know, when, you, when you're working on a project and it's a particular time, right? You know, you, you, you are more serious, right? You know, when there's a particular time and it's approaching, then you know that, oh, by this particular date, I must take this particular exam. So it's always advisable to schedule your exam in advance. 
But if for any reason on the particular examination dates, you know, you discover that you are either not ready or maybe you fall ill, right? You have 24 hours before the deadline to reschedule. So just take note of that, right? If for any reason, you know, you cannot take your, your exam or the schedule date, you know, just, you know, just take note of the fact that you can actually reschedule. So, um, but it's always important to make sure that you choose a convenient time for your exam appointment and make sure that you try to be stay motivated by the date on your calendar. And uh, also remember you, you schedule your exams on the AWS.training website, right? And of course, the final goal is to actually take the exam and get AWS certified. So um, I just want to you know, show you how the examination guide looks like, right? So you know, on the examination guide, right, you are going to see you know, what the exam is actually going to be testing you on, right? It's also going to show you the type of questions that are going to come for the exam, right? And also it is going to show you right, the domains, right? And the the, the degree of, or let me say the importance that each domain is going to have in a particular exam, right? For example, this is the certified, you know, cloud practitioner exam guide, right? And you can see that on the technology domain, right? It has about 33% of the questions are going to come on AWS technology, right? And the second most popular domain is cloud concepts. So it just pays attention to go through the exam guide to know exactly what you're going to expect in the examination. And um, another resource that I really want to um, focus on or you know, bring your attention to is the, um, the, the digital training website, right? Which is um, on AWS.training. So um, when I started preparing for certifications exams, right? There were some courses on this website, but I, really, I didn't really pay attention to them, right? But you know, if you want to train or if you want to get training, right, and you do not have, you know, money to afford, you know, maybe a subscription from um, a cloud guru or Linux Academy or even Udemy, right, which is the cheapest. If you want free stuff, well, AWS has a whole website and a whole catalog of, you know, um, uh, training material for the various certifications exams. So um, on this website, you can, you know, you can also get training for certain domains, not necessarily um, certifications, certification exams, right? If there's any particular, uh, maybe service, for example, there are also service or technology focus uh, trainings on the website as well. So um, you just need to take note of the fact that it is free. Um, it is actually built by AWS experts, you know, and, you know, you can learn at your own pace. And um, AWS also offers the, exam readiness course, right? This is available both as, you know, live, right, as a live webinar, right? And um, there are some courses as well as on the AWS training uh, portal. Mm -hmm. So this, the webinars actually cover the exam readiness content for a specific AWS certification exam. So you have walkthroughs of sample questions um, that will help you to understand the rationale behind the correct and incorrect choices that, you know, on that particular question. So um, the live webinars are usually hosted by, you know, AWS accredited instructor, instructors, right? And there's also a Q1A session at the end, right? So when you participate in a live readiness webinar, they, they bring up a sample question, you know, they give you some, they first of all teach you how to interpret the question, right? They give you some time to go over the answers and then they explain why the various answers are either correct or they're wrong, right? So one of the reasons why it took me a long time to actually get certified in the beginning and towards the end, you know, my, the exams were, I, I was taking a shorter time to prepare for the exams was because I discovered about the exam readiness courses, you know, very late, right? And the moment you go through an exam readiness course, right, it actually boosts your confidence, right? Because, you know, you, when you look at a question, or even when you are studying, right, when you're going through the certification course material, right, you automatically know the type of questions that are going to come in the exam, right, so you are more effective. So I'll definitely advise anyone that is going in for any exam to at least go through one of the exam readiness courses for that particular exam, right. They are going to tell you what is going to, not necessarily word for word, the question that is going to come for the exam, but they will tell you the type of questions and how you have to interpret them, 
right? And that is definitely going to increase your chances for, for, for passing the, the exam. So um, other sources of, you know, um, information that you can use to prepare for AWS certifications exams are, you know, there's Microsoft edX, there's Coursera, and there's also YouTube, right? So um, on these platforms, you know, they are free introductory courses into um, AWS, especially the uh, Certified um, Cloud Practitioner Certification Exam. So if you want more free stuff, right, you can also go to these, um, to these platforms. And um, on YouTube, for example, there is a, a free course by um, a Free Code Camp. Um, the instructor is a guy called Andrew Brown, and um, I think it's a three hours for something minutes course on the AWS Cloud Practitioner um, examination. That was a course that I took, and uh, you know it covers you know a lot of information that is definitely going to help you to pass the exam. Uh, but if you if you've got some money to spend and you want you know really high quality you know training material, um, you can the, the the platforms available are you know there's Cloud Academy, there is uh, a Cloud Guru, um, there's also Udemy. Um, I have a lot of courses on Udemy, and there's also Wiz Labs, right? Wiz Labs has, it's just a question bank, you know, that helps you to, to test your theoretical knowledge about the different AWS concepts, right? Um, I think out of all of them, A Cloud Guru is the most popular and it's definitely, you know, I think it's the best uh, platform, but it's expensive, right? I think it costs something like, I don't know, maybe 40 or $41 every month for, for a monthly subscription, but you have access to all of the training materials as well. So um, just some tips that you need to pay attention to when you're preparing for AWS certification exams, right? Um, I think you, you need to schedule your exam in advance, right? And then walk backwards, right? Create some time every day, maybe 30 minutes, right? Especially for the cloud practitioner exam, right? I'm really insisting on this because if you just put aside 30 minutes, to one hour every day for two weeks, right? You are going to pass the exam. And the goal of AWS certification exams is not to score a thousand over 1000, no. Because even if you have, even if you score an 800 or a 900, right? It doesn't necessarily mean that, it does not necessarily reflect the fact that, you know, you know everything about AWS um, at that particular score, right? Because the format in which the, the exam is being tested, right? It's a very funny format, right? So just put in mind that the goal is to pass and not necessarily to have a thousand over 1000, right? So make sure you practice, right? Take advantage of the free tier account, right? And also go over as many labs as possible, right? Um, test yourself along the way to know exactly which areas you, you are lacking in, right? If possible, reach out to anyone in the community now that there is um, an AWS user group in Douala, you can reach out to anyone that is certified and voice available, Roshos is available, and the other people who are available to help you, right? Um, make sure you, you schedule the exam as well, because when you're working on any project that doesn't have any deadline, right, you will not take it seriously, right? So make sure you schedule the exam and um, create a support network. Join a user group, join an online community so that they can push you. And you know, you also be with people that um, you also be with people that are taking the exam. So even if you 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 lack motivation, right? The fact that you're in a community and people are passing every day, you will want to sit up and do something about it. So um, some tips when taking you know the actual exam, right? Uh, remember, I mentioned the fact that now there is um, online proctoring, right? So you can take the exam at home, but you need to make sure that you review your, your system requirements and run the system test, you know, before scheduling the exam, because you, you need to download, you know, the software on your local laptop on your local machine. So make sure you do that before the actual time for the test so that you know what works and what doesn't work, right? You make sure that you have everything up to date so that you don't face any disappointment during the time for the exam. So, you know, make sure that, you know, your laptop is also fully charged. If you're in a particular environment where, you know, electricity is not guaranteed, you know, for somebody like me, I always come to the office to take my certifications exams because we've got a backup generator and we've got batteries here. 
at home, anything could happen and I could lose power. So, you know, it's advisable to always get a location that you are sure you wouldn't face any power cuts. And um, another thing that you need to pay attention to when it comes to the online proctoring is that um, the proctor is going to communicate to you in, um, in English. So um, if English is not your first or second language, right, you need, you need to know just basic English to be capable of communicating with the proctor. So just make sure that, you know, whatever accommodations are need to be made for the exam, you know, are made ahead of time. If you are um, physically challenged and you want to go to a testing center, you have the possibility of, you know, letting them know that, you know, you're physically challenged and you need additional support. And um, if English is a second language for you, right, a 30 minutes exam extension can be awarded to you. Right. So um, if there are any French speaking, you know, um, members or any French French speaking people on this particular call, you know, just take note of this one. Right. You know, if English is not your because the examination is only in English and um, some other languages, you know, there is no certification exam in French or even Spanish, which is uh, surprising, you know, but if, if English is a second language to you, right, just take note of the fact that you can request for a 30 minutes extension. So you have enough time to read and understand the questions, right? Um, also, remember that you have the possibility of flagging questions. If there's any particular question that you can, you know, really interpret or you don't understand, do not spend too much time on it. Just flag it and then come back to it later on. Right? So at the end of the day, you know, you must figure out what best suits you, right? And the way I started preparing for exams, you know, when I started, is definitely not the way I prepare for exams today, right? Because at first I was jumping around, you know, I was going through, um, I was trying many things in the beginning, right? But now I know exactly what works for me, right? If I had to prepare for an AWS certification exam, I already know all the areas where I can get the best information, right? And my advice to anyone is to pay attention to the free training material that is available on the AWS training website. So um, one last thing that I would like to uh, discuss is the Get AWS Certified Global Challenge, right? So um, this is a global challenge to get certified for anyone in the world, right? And um, to me, this is the fastest and easiest way you can get an AWS certification, right? And you, you, you validate this challenge by, you know, taking the certified a cloud practitioner examination before the 1st of July, 2021. So um, the registration has already been gone. It actually started um, at the end of March, right? But the registration ends on the 11th of June. So there's still time for anyone who hasn't registered for this challenge to actually register. So uh, why would you want to take this challenge? Well, first of all, you are going to be part of a global community, right? Of people that are taking the challenge, number one. Number two, um, you are, because you're part of a global community, you know, any questions that you have, there'll always be somebody available to, 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 to answer the questions for you, right? And at the end, you are going to receive, you know, um, a digital badge when you take the certification exam and pass, right? So um, what happens during the challenge is that, you know, the first thing is that you need to go to the um, um, pages.awscloud.com slash take challenge to sign up for the challenge, right? So when you sign up for the challenge, you are going to receive an email acknowledging your registration, right? And the, the, in the email, you're also going to receive um, links for free resources that can help you prepare for the exam. And you also receive a free voucher code to take the practice exam for the certified cloud practitioner exam. So once you receive this link, you know, you make sure that whenever you're scheduling your exam, it needs to be before the 1st of July, because that is when the challenge ends. So um, you need to also choose where you're going to take the exam, right? Um, choose whether you're taking it in a testing center or whether you are taking it online, right? But you must also open an AWS certification account, right? Because that is where you are going to schedule the exam. So um, for those who are in, in the city of Douala, um, when you are scheduling an exam to take in, um, in a testing center, you know, 
the the the, port, the the website is going to show you all of the, the the recognized or registered testing centers around your particular area right um i know there are two in aqua there's one in um Ferush. those are the ones that i've been to but there are many other ones i think there are some in uh, uh bonamusadi as well so um another um part of the challenge that you need to pay attention to is the there is a live training on twitch twitch.tv right so um the live training on twitch is called aws power hour cloud practitioner right so this is a session that is carried out by chris raj right and chris is a technical trainer from aws certification and training team so the the power hour runs for for about one hour right so the, I think there are six episodes, right? And each, each episode covers one of the domains that are required to pass the certified cloud practitioner exam, right? So after one hour, there is 30 minutes for Q&A, right? So I think it's a unique opportunity for you to attend training that is offered by an AWS certification and training, you know, um, a trainer. And you can ask him any questions that you have directly so it's a unique opportunity and i think you know you guys should definitely take advantage of it unfortunately it started you know it has already begun right and i think they've already gone through three episodes right but although it is live you know the episodes are still available offline so you can still go back and you can watch them to catch up right so there are three more episodes you can still join and catch up it's not too late and um, i think i'll also share the link for the power hour um agenda after this meetup to anyone in the in the in the Dwala forum so um at the end of course make sure just just put it make sure you you actually take the exam and pass right because the challenge is not to prepare for the exam the challenge is not to attend attend the live training right the challenge is to actually take and pass the exam so despite the fact that there is a lot of recommended you know training and a lot of recommended courses etc if you already have experience on the AWS platform, right, you can just probably go to YouTube, you watch the Andrew Brown's um, Cloud Practitioner course, which is about three, three hours, 40 minutes, and you can always go and take the exam and pass and you validate the challenge, you know, but make sure that before the 1st of July, you take and you pass the AWS Certified Cloud Practitioner exam. So uh, just to summarize um, and give you guys a few things that you must take home. Um, the first thing that I want you guys to take home is that, you know, there is no prerequisite to taking an AWS certification exam, right? Um, even if you're a project manager, um, you are a sales rep, um, you're coming from a different background in IT. So long as you are in a company where you think cloud computing is relevant, or you want to pivot and move into cloud computing, for example, right? There is no prerequisite. You can always take the exam. Um, but you need to keep in mind that you know, certifications are just a stepping stone, right? A certification might open the door for an interview. A certification might, you know, you know, make you shine, right? But what is actually going to make you excel is the actual work that you're doing every day at your particular job site, right? So do not, you know, cling on to certifications, right? get the certification, but make sure that you are capable of doing the, the tasks that are required by companies or the company that you work for. And um, also take note of the fact that there is online proctoring now, right? So some people used to have um, issues, you know, going to test centers, some test centers do not have good laptops, or for example, the test centers that I've been to, for example, there is no pad to write on, or the mouse, you know, has a lot of issues, right? So just, you know, Take note of the fact that you can test from the comfort of your home or your office. And um, also take note of the fact that the cloud practitioner is the easiest AWS certification, right? It is the easiest and it is the cheapest, right? And it takes the least amount of time to prepare for. So if you ever want to get AWS certified, this is a no brainer for you. And um, I'll also advise everyone to join the Get AWS Certified Global Challenge now, because you know when you validate this challenge, they are also going to open you to the LinkedIn community, right? And on the community, you're going to see exactly what is happening around the world, right? You'll see so many people from different countries, 
uh, from India, from Nigeria, from South Africa, South Africa, everywhere, right? You see what is happening in the certification space, right? So if you are just, you know, maybe you are, um, you are just getting into IT, for example, right? You can, you know, you can learn a lot from it, right? You can know about career prospects. You can know in which direction technology is heading in, right? So um, that's all I have for you guys. Um, that's all I have for you today. Um, and thank you for your time. I hope you found this presentation uh, very informational. And um, I think we, we are ready now to take any questions that you might have. So thank you. Over to you, Roshas. Thank you, Mr. Fon, for the, uh, for the brilliant presentation. I actually found it really informational. Um, I'm not a certifications guy, so, but now I understand why I might have missed out on a couple of opportunities. You know, maybe I think <laughs> maybe down two months to, or a month down the lane, I would like to try out the uh, cloud practitioner. Is it the cloud? You know, it's the it's the it's the AWS certified cloud, cloud practitioner, practitioner certification. Yeah, you should because definitely try. Ongoing, ongoing uh, get certified get certified global challenge. And then I would, after that, I would definitely like to go for the AWS Certified Solutions Architect and then the AWS Certified Developer Associate before the year ends. So that is, I can share that, get AWS Certified hashtag on Twitter and then have that <laughs> three times AWS, AWS Certified, certified. Twitter bio and LinkedIn bio. So um, if you guys, okay, I have a question. I think the... All right, Ruff, Ruff, guys. Denzel Kim wants to ask a question. So, should I read it out to you or should he ask it himself? Because yes, actually, uh, it's on the charts. I don't know if you can see the charts. Okay, no, just read out the question. I read if it he has typed it up. Okay. okay. So he says, I'm already preparing for the solutions architect associate exam. Is it beneficial for me to take the certified cloud practitioner? Okay, so um, I think, <clears throat> well, um, if, if, if you're already preparing for the um, Solutions Architect Associate um, Certification Exam, right? Um, you can still take the Cloud Practitioner Exam. Why? First of all, because um, it is cheap, okay? <laughs> Secondly, because it's easy. Um, when you succeed, it's going to boost your confidence, right? And you, you are going to familiarize yourself with the exam format and the questions, right? And um, if it's your first time going through the online proctoring, right? This is the best exam that you can use to you know, go through the whole process, right? So um, I, I definitely think you, you you still come back and do it. You're still going to find it very, 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 very informational or very helpful, right? And also you are going to participate in the in the global challenge, right? With so many people around the world. So I think you should, you should definitely try the exam, right? And because it's easy, you're not going to take too much time preparing for it anyway. So it's not going to waste much of your time. Okay. Yeah, hope that answers uh, your question. Uh, Denzel, Denzel Kim is, is are, you, are you satisfied with the answer? Okay, thank you. Another thank question. Okay. Please, you guys should keep your questions coming in. I, I mean, we have to have a lot of questions coming in. So. I think we have a survey, right? We can be filling the survey, I think. Okay, um, I'll just share the questionnaire for you guys to actually, you know, tell us what you think. Bear in mind that there's a raffle draw based on, uh, like, there's a raffle draw to win a AWS, AWS credits, actually, based on the people who actually Fill up this question, and so I think you guys should get to it. I'll share the link. The link is shared in the chats. I hope everybody can see it. So you have to, you have to fill the questionnaire, and so you are eligible for for free credits. For free credits, yes. Okay. Okay, Denzel, Denzel Kim's question is, how long does it take to prepare and pass the AWS certified exam? 
Uh, honestly, it depends on the. It depends on two things. It depends on what you can control, <laughs> and it depends on what you cannot control as well. Uh, but I would say um, it depends. Ultimately, it depends on you, right? And it also depends on the the examination. Some examinations are difficult. Um, some 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 of the concepts might be new to you, so you are going to take you know more time to get acquainted with them, right? And um, what you realize is because the information in some of the certification examinations actually overlap, right? It might take you a lot of time to prepare for maybe the solutions architect certification, right? Um, and maybe a lot of time to prepare for the developer certification, right? But if you decided to go back and prepare for the cloud practitioner, right? It will just take you a couple of weeks. <clears throat> right. So um, it just depends, you know, the, the important thing is that you, you allocate, you know, time every day right to go over the course material you test yourself and then you know exactly how ready you are for the exam right so uh, i hope this answers your questions but your question but it's a very difficult <laughs> question it just really really depends on the individual and the particular circumstances that you find yourself in right because even you and also the certification exam right because even you as an individual right you would find that some exams would take you a lot of time some wouldn't take you much time right but just make sure that you look at the um the how do you call it the exam the exam guide right look at the exam guide and then it's going to give you an idea you know of how long it can take you to actually prepare for the certification exam right thank you okay are there more questions anybody has a question come on now What about the question there? I hope, I hope you guys are feeling it. Okay, um, no free snacks. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the free credits are free credits, so you might be a winner. Nobody knows. Nobody knows, you know, the free credits. <laughs> what? Okay, there's another question by uh, Sam, Sam Ngo. He says, uh, what advice do you have for someone with no IT background? Right. All right. Uh, this this is a very very difficult one, right? If if you don't have any IT background, right? Uh, my advice is to start first of all with you know the fundamentals, right? Um, people get into IT from different um, I would say from different angles. Um, some people start first of all with programming. Some people start you know freelance programming. Some people start with computer science. Um, some people start with certifications, for example, right? So I got into IT starting with certifications, right? So um, I, I started taking the Microsoft um, Systems Engineer Certifications exams, right? So they actually take you from a novice to a pro, right? From zero to hero. Uh, but the advice I can give to anyone that is that wants to get into IT at this point is to start from the fundamentals, right? Go for a certification like A+, right? and um, go for, an, for a certification like um, uh, N plus or CCNE, right? And then also learn how to program, right? Learn, get into web development, um, HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and Python as well, right? So um, those are really fundamental um, core 
core technologies or core skills that you know you need to get familiar with before you get into things like you know databases you know advanced networking security etc right um, but that's a very very that's a very very complicated question i think if you want you know i can follow up on this with a lot of recommended you know information if you really want to get into it then you know i can you can join me later on you can send me a dm on whatsapp and then you know i will try to you know introduce you to some some material some courses you know that can get you started but what i want to say is um you, everybody gets into it especially most people that are already um, at a particular age right you know everybody gets into it from a non-it background at some point so you know it doesn't really matter so long as you are willing to study number one so long as you are willing to dedicate time to test practice experiment you know make and break things right you will definitely have a very uh, brilliant career in, in it so I, I know I probably need to give you a direct answer, but uh, that's the best I can do for now. It, it's something that I can take a whole day to talk about. So um, just just make sure you remind me on, on WhatsApp and then um, I'll try to give you as much detailed information as possible. But programming and software development are very, very important if you want to get into IT. It's not, there are many people that are very that are experts. There are many people that are IT experts that don't know how to program. Right, my programming skills are very, 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 very basic, right? But if I have to advise anyone, you know, take programming seriously because software is eating the world. Yeah, so that's it. Yeah, exactly. The guy of cloud, a cloud guru. Guru. Yeah, that's true, right? There's, there's this guy, um, oh, what's his name again? Um, Brian, Brian Kronenberg, right? Um, he's the founder of um, the co-founder of a cloud guru right he used to be a lawyer right he used to be a lawyer and then decided that he wanted to get into it and today he runs the number one and yeah, the most popular training platform for cloud certifications in the whole world right and he used to be a lawyer right and he he, he wasn't a young person when he started it right he started it when he was already in i don't know maybe in his uh, late 30s or 40s or something of that sort right so there are many stories said, there are many stories of people that, you know, left from nursing and got into IT, left from banking, left from sales, you know, even left from, from law, right? So there's always a way to begin. There's always a place to start. There's always a course that you can attend. There's always a certification exam that you can, you can take and pass to increase your chances of, you know, getting your first job, right? So there's always, there's always a way to get into IT. There's a, there's a question from Sandrine. She said, she's asking, what did you say you will gain from joining the AWS Get Certified Challenge? Uh, first of all, <laughs> first of all, right, um, you are going to gain that status, okay? You are going to gain the status that you are AWS Certified, right? And it is, I would, I would refer to it like a springboard, right, that you can easily use to jump onto the next level. What do you gain? Because first of all, when you join the challenge, right, you are going to get a free voucher to take a practice test. Mm -hmm. So when you pass the practice test, right, you would need to take the actual exam again, right? But it is possible for you to get a free voucher for the actual exam if you are part of the uh, AWS uh, user group, Tuala. So instead of spending $100, you end up spending $0, but you are going to acquire an industry recognized certification. And then you shouldn't end there, right? You should take it up. You should take it to the next level, right? Just consider that like a springboard, right? So you can bounce from there and you can get to other things that will actually increase your chances of having a better career in the future. So I hope that answered your question. Is everybody filling up the, the question as his his question? Okay, I think we can we, we can look at the names and do the raffle draw. Yeah. But I mean we need to definitely we need to give out these credits. I don't like keeping them all to myself. We need to give it out. Yeah. Yes, A AWS has a lot of free credits. We need to make sure that we take as many as possible.
So, um, Prosha, do you think everyone has finished with the questionnaire? If everyone has finished, then we need to do the lucky draw. Um, I think I think you have to send the names to me. Yeah, check check if you have the names. We should have them by now. Well, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I have eight names. How many? There were there fourteen participants. All right, we we'll, we we'll go ahead with the eight. You no, know, I mean, we we'll make it a. Uh, Make it more fun. Oh, is there is there somebody still feeling it? Feeling it up? Okay, a minute, please. Yeah, he's cheap. Hey, I was wondering, has anyone here taken the the practice test for the certified cloud practitioner already? Nobody yet. Okay. All right. Okay. Yeah. Oh, you, you are, you are doing it. You're not doing okay, it. good. I'll, I'll, I'll try to see if I can get, I get a voucher for the exam. Even if there's anyone preparing for any other AWS certification, not necessarily the cloud practitioner certification, right? Even um, solutions architect, developer, sysops, or professional, or any specialty, right? Any exam that you're preparing for, just just let us know, uh, because one of the advantages of being part of the the community is that you know we hear about a lot of things before they actually they actually go public. So you know there might be there might be some free stuff for you. You never know. So just just let us know and. Um, We'll try, to, we'll try to keep you as informed as possible. Yeah. All right. All right, I think. Anybody else? Yes, one last name is there. Let me send it to you. The queen is still feeling it. Okay, let's wait for I think we have the last name. Okay. Yep. So let's let me um do I need to, do I need to share the, the screen? Yeah, I think she, I think you should share your screen. Yeah, Let, let's see, let's see the winners. You need to be transparent. Yeah. Yeah. This is the form to participate in the raffle draw. Yes, uh, he's Yes, that's that's wait, that's the form. Okay. I'm sure you shall work and see. Yes, spin spin oh. the wheel. Wow, I corresponded. So 
Why? You want to win again. <laughs> okay. Denzel. Wow. So that's nice. So we have two winners. We have Mandela and Denzel. All right. All right. Congratulations. Um, congratulations. Uh, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I don't know if it's uh, two guys. Anyways, congratulations to your. I think for that's it, right? Yep, that's that's all we have for today. Okay, so what we'll do is that we'll contact you guys through by email. And okay, um, Mandela says I'm giving I'm giving away my credits to the first person who sits for the cloud practitioner practice exam and pass. Okay. Uh, wow, good. that's nice. That's really nice. I hope I hope everybody's reading. <laughs> What's that? And Mandela is he's giving up himself for the good of the community. Yeah, yeah. He's a lucky guy, he's a lucky and generous guy. <laughs> yes, <Yeah>. very generous. <laughs> he's a role model. <laughs> Everyone should try to be like Mandela. Everybody should be like Mandela, like you know. That, that name first, that name Mandela. You know something about that name. Was something hey, about that name. The man who gave up 27, Mandela, level, 27 years of his life. 27 years of his life for others. You know what you're saying? You know, Mandela is here flipping credits in the air like three minutes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, no jokes. Nice, wow. Um, well, uh, where, where is her? Uh, actually, no, I didn't. I, I didn't write down any conclusion speech. I'm sorry, but I've, maybe if you should share, share share the links for the. For the um, I've been sharing links for for Twitter for um, the meetup for our, okay. our group on on WhatsApp. I don't. I hope everybody has been seeing those. Let me send, Let me share them again. So we have. Meet up. What else? What's WhatsApp and uh... no, I can oh, no, I'm sending to. Okay, thank you. I can see the links. All right. Yeah. I think that that concludes the bit of session. All right. I hope I hope um, you guys are going to take the practice test and um, get ready for the challenge. Um, if you haven't registered for the challenge, please um, just register. It doesn't matter if you you don't think you are going to go all the way to the end. You know, sometimes you don't really know who you are until you take a challenge, right? So, I would encourage everyone to just sign up for the challenge and discover who you really are. Maybe you might not be motivated today, but ah, tomorrow, you know, things might change next week, and you might just decide to go over the material and find it very easy. So just just register at least and just see what it is all about before deciding if you might take the exam, right? Thank you all for your time. And please tag us in your success stories. You know, when you're posting <laughs> on LinkedIn, on Twitter, we'd like to be a part of that too. Thank you. Definitely. And thank you for taking out the time to come, to come and be here with us today. Take care. All right. Goodbye. Goodbye, everyone.